Street photography essentials for not just taking excellent street photos, but also for documenting your street photography journey. Here are my essentials, what I bring every day in my very minimal, but very effective setup. I've got some years of experience on this matter and I used to bring quite literally a ton of gear to be ready to document any and every eventuality while I was out on the street. But after taking a reality check, I've downsized quite a lot. So in this video, I'll show you what I bring and not just for my street photography, but what I use to make these POV videos, how I document everything for a maximum creative output and minimal weight. Why I bring them and how each thing serves me creatively. So let's start with... As a dedicated street photography camera, I have my Fujifilm X-T5 with the 23mm f1.4 lens. And this camera is not just great for photography, it also films very well. So with a flick of a switch, I can quickly change between photography and video. So that's very convenient. For me, the photo always comes first, but when I have a photo from a particular scene that I like, I switch over to video and grab a few clips both vertically and horizontally. Why? Because then I have B-roll for my videos that I can use to describe a certain scene I was at to get a certain look if I'm making a video about a certain type of photography. I also film generic shots here and there for my stock video portfolio. And that's a great idea if you want to start documenting your street photography journey. You can start making stock video clips as well to serve as a passive source of income. And it's very easy. As for the vertical shots, the idea is to make a reel like a, with a clip of the scene where I took a photo and then add the photo to show kind of like what it looks like. I haven't started that yet but uh, here are a few examples of what I'm thinking about. The other camera I have that I sometimes use for street photography is the Sony a7 Mark IV with the 24-70 f2.8 lens where I do exactly the same. I get the shot, I get a few clips both vertically and horizontally and I got everything I want for a let's say a POV video or if I want to film something for uh, another video where I explain what I'm thinking about when I'm out shooting my street photography. Attached to any camera I use when I'm out on the street shooting is a Peak Design wrist strap like this one. In case I make a fool of myself by tripping or slipping, anything like that, the camera stays securely fixed to my wrist. This is also a great way to prevent people from snatching your camera, let's say you're in a foreign country or where it's a little bit dodgy, it's not a problem up here in Norway, but people can snatch the camera from you and just hit and run basically. This wrist strap prevents that. So it's a great investment and I'll leave a link to everything down in the description. Right, moving on. If you want to film POV videos, an action cam like a GoPro is a great thing to have. You can also use your phone, of course, but what I like about this is the hot shoe mount that I have on the camera. So just put it on there like this and it's basically plug and play. I just hit record and I can document whatever I want to document. So let's say I'm at a scene, I see a subject coming along, hit record on the GoPro and then I start taking a picture until I'm happy. And voila, it's documented with photography and video. I do have a chest mount as well, but I hardly ever use it. If you want that classic POV shot that you've seen on all those videos, you can just simply hold the GoPro here go out like so, take a picture and voila, you have the exact same thing. And that's one less thing to think about and you can really focus on your photography because that comes first. Instead of a shoulder bag that looks really, really cool, much cooler than a backpack, I still use a backpack. I had this shoulder bag before, but despite me having very little with me, it really annoyed the shoulder when I was out for hours and hours walking all those steps. So I got rid of that and got a small think tank backstory 13, I think it is. And that's where I stash all the rest of my essentials. It feels more balanced when I'm out walking a lot. So. That's something to think about if you want to look cool with a shoulder bag, you should think that, okay, this might hurt or this might annoy the shoulder. The backpack is a better option in my opinion, but that's up to you, what you like, what you prefer. 
on long sessions, especially during the summer, it's very important to stay hydrated. I have a dedicated water bottle with me every time. Sure, you can go to cafes and get a glass of water, but if it's not coffee time and I'm at a good location and I'm thirsty, this is a great thing to always have with you. And these are the most essential items I bring with me. Now for the not so essential items, but that still lives in the camera bag. It's a Cobra 2 mini tripod from iFootage. It's super sturdy, has a smart quick release system on the base plate there, and I'm a huge fan of smart systems like that. It's particularly useful in those rare cases where I want to make a long exposure, especially at night. Let's say you have a bridge or something like that, and you can see the potential for a cool long exposure shot with those light trails and everything like that. It's also good to do time lapses, and with this tripod, I have a holder for my phone as well so I can film with both my phone and my big camera to get some B-roll for the video, to get stock videos and make time lapses. It's actually one of my favorite items in the bag. It's not super essential, but it's a very good to have there and I absolutely love it. I have a small bag of magnetic filters from Freewell with me that I hardly ever use, but in that rare case of a daytime time lapse where I need to show, show where I need to slow down the shutter speeds, uh, I think they are great to have. I have an ND32 filter and an ND1000, and I can stack them on top of each other. Let's say you have an interesting static subject and fast moving clouds. That would be an interesting image for me to try and do a long exposure of with the clouds in the back. So, something to think about there as well. Not essential, but great to have. Going out on the streets to photograph is music to my ears. When you add actual music, it makes the experience even better. I use the AirPods Pro, not the new ones, and they are fantastic. What I like about listening to music or an audiobook or a podcast or anything like that is it takes away the, I sometimes get that spotlight effect on me when I'm out photographing, thinking that people are looking at me or watching me or whatever. and when I listen to music or a book or a podcast, that removes that feeling. So I can really focus on my photography and it helps my photography. I'm not an intrusive street photographer at all, but getting rid of that spotlight effect, I think that makes me a better photographer. This is basically my laptop and mobile office when I'm out. So when I'm done with a session or after a very long session where I need a break, I like to sit down and at cafes and edit my photos. And for that, I have Lightroom on the iPad that syncs with the Lightroom folder or the Lightroom library on my laptop. So I can sit down, bring out the photos and edit photos, export, post, all that good stuff. I also use an app called Notion. That's where I write the scripts for this video, make shot lists, write down ideas and all that good stuff. And speaking of writing and editing, I have an Apple Pencil. It's the second generation, something like that. And I also have the Magic Keyboard for this 11 inch iPad. Despite it being very small, it's surprisingly nice to write on. Another great app I've started exploring and using is something called Procreate. That's what I use to make the thumbnail for this video. It's basically a drawing app and it lets me be a little bit more creative and I want to make or be creative with making my own thumbnails. So I really like that. And it's also fun to droodle around and get lost in drawing stick people. Believe it or not, I was actually good at drawing once, so maybe that will be a new hobby at some point. I don't know. The iPad 11 inch with the M2 chip is quite expensive, but I find it pleasant to use and I'm actually more productive with it since it makes it easier and more fun for me to be creative. Mine is a Fitbit Charge 5. It's a great little tracker with a good app and it basically serves as a reminder that street photography is very healthy. On any given session, I will walk at least 10,000 steps, if not more. This also tracks your sleep, heart rate, and plenty of other things. It's a good addition to your street photography gadgets.
That's also a good reminder for myself to get a new pair of shoes because just before the winter, my favorite pair fell apart. 2022 was a good street photo year for me, with proof in the shoes since they got hammered to the point of annihilation. So I have to get new ones. What I look for in shoes is first and foremost, they have to be comfortable, then they have to be light and they have to breathe. So my feet don't stink as bad after good long sessions out on the streets. In the winter time, it's a different story up here in Norway. I have to have thicker shoes, but I have some sneaker-ish looking shoes that uh, I think works for me. I'll leave a couple of recommendations down in the description. And we are getting close to the end of the video. If you want to subscribe to the channel and if you have come this far, it makes sense for you to do so. I make these videos about street photography, travel and photography in general, my photography business. So leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I would be forever grateful. Thank you so much. And the only things that goes in my camera bag are the iPad Pro, the tripod and that water bottle. Everything else is either in my hand or in my pockets or the fitness tracker that obviously sits on my wrist here. And you might wonder why don't I bring extra lenses simply because having a choice it takes away a little bit of the creativity I think when I wonder, okay, should I have this lens or that lens for that particular scene? If I have only a fixed lens, like on the Fujifilm, that's why the Fuji X-T5 is my favorite or preferred street photography camera. When you have that, you have to zoom with a fixed lens by walking toward the subject. You get more creative with working with what you have, so it eliminates the, uh, the options that wouldn't be essential, so to speak. Yeah. Maybe that makes sense, I don't know. Leave a like if it makes sense or comment below if it didn't, whatever. And I bring this setup with me most days when I'm out shooting, I get to create my POV videos. I get to only do street photography if that's what I'm doing that day. I can film stock footage, I can make time lapses and I can have a mobile office with the iPad. It's a fantastic setup, I'm very happy with it, and it's a recommended base setup, I guess you can say, with the few uh, extra essentials like the iPad or whatever, if you, if you like to work at cafes as I do. Okay, hope this was somewhat useful. I know I've been rambling uh, quite a bit in this video. I don't know how long it took to record, probably, I think it took over an hour. Just it. I have my, I have my, so with a, so with a flick of a switch, I can, I only speak English on my YouTube channel, so it's a bit hard for me, but um, yeah, maybe it makes sense and maybe it helped you or gave you some ideas on what you can get as uh, an essential kit if you're wanting to, to uh, document your photography with making POV videos out on the street or whatever. You don't need a lot of gear, don't fall into that trap of getting loads and loads of gear, bringing everything you have in your backpack because A, it, you will tire much sooner than you would normally and uh, you don't really need it. Okay, well, that's it for the video. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.